Welcome to part 92 of making a Stuart model steam plant. Before shipping the steam plant to California, there are some small but important jobs left to do. In this episode I show how to pipe the boiler to the water pump, water tank and economizer. To make it simple for the owner to assemble the plant. I was going to send it this week, but I just haven't had the time. The rows of bubble wrap only arrived yesterday, and they're currently sat in my kitchen. I feel that it would be impractical to ship this plant to California in one piece. I don't think it would arrive in good condition. The owner originally sent me quite a lot of parts from California, and a high proportion of them were damaged. Some of the boilers, particularly one, were very badly damaged. I'm going to use cardboard boxes reinforced internally with polystyrene and wrap the parts in bubble wrap so they're floating inside the package. I've done this in the past and it's been OK. Before I can package up the components for the plant, there are one or two small jobs that need doing. The first job is to fill the holes in the baseboard for mounting the lamps with cyanoacrylate adhesive, better known as superglue. This is the medium viscosity stuff. After applying some cyanoacrylate adhesive into each hole, I use a paper clip to smooth it out. I do not want the hole to be solid. The brass hexagon bolts that hold the lamps in place on the baseboard are only just long enough. To make the bolts match the others in the condenser and the water tank, these are the longest ones that I could get. A warning to the owner, be very careful when you fit the lamps. The bolts in this area do not need to be very tight at all. The next part of the job is to show how to fit the boiler. It sits on a piece of heat insulation material. This thermal insulation is easily damaged and this is how I do it. Hold it in place underneath the boiler and slide the entire assembly onto the baseboard. To make this assembly and disassembly job easier, the boiler is clamped to the baseboard using two clamps. What I'm currently doing is mounting the gas jet in its final position, and the position is critical. Once the jet is in place in the venturi of the gas burner, I can bolt it down to the baseboard. I don't need to apply any superglue in this instance, because the threads on the bolts are more than long enough for the application. Why didn't I use wood screws, you may be thinking? Well, these look better. And from my experience of building and flying many radio-controlled model aircraft, they are more than strong enough. These dome head brass bolts are very easily damaged, that's why I thought I would pre-fit them, so it's one less job for the owner to do. I didn't fully tighten the second bolt for some reason, I will do this later. The next part of the assembly job needs to be done with great care. You simply slide the boiler into the clamp and make sure that the venturi hole is in the right place to accept the gas jet. Here's the clamp at the other end. I'm not going to tighten this up. I'm assembling this excellent steam plant so I can perform a final steam test. Then I will disassemble it and send it to the USA. This job is the only job that's difficult. These are the water pipes that run from the water tank to the economizer or water preheater and then back to the inlet of the water pump. When I originally assembled this plant, I found this part of the job really difficult because the nuts slid down the pipe inside the boiler and for that reason, I'm taking no chances. And that's why I'm using duct tape to prevent the nuts from sliding down the pipe. This made the job a whole lot easier. And once the plant is fully assembled, removing the duct tape is a very easy job. It's quite obvious which pipe goes where. And it really doesn't matter with the economizer coil which of these unions you fit the pipe to. Here's a tip. The pipes that have the shortest bends on them are the ones that go nearest to the water tank and economizer. The other pipe with the longer bend in it goes from the economizer to the bottom union of the pump, which is the inlet. The bent part of this pipe is much longer. And in this case, I'm fitting the pipe to the top union of the economizer. It is absolutely vital not to over tighten these union nuts. If you strip them, then there is a problem. You don't need to use any sealant whatsoever. The 60 degree union cone fits perfectly. This part of the job is a bit fiddly. I'm using a small spanner to tighten the union nut onto the pump at the bottom. This is the inlet, but you need to be very careful you don't damage the upper union with the spanner. And once again, you must not, under any circumstances, 
over-tighten the union nuts. The duct tape that I wrapped around the pipes looks a bit unsightly, but it's very easy to remove once the plant is assembled. This pipe goes from the pump's outlet to the check valve, and it's really important to fit it to the check valve first. Try doing it the other way round and you'll see why. The union cone needs to be in position in the check valve first. The other end is attached to the pump's outlet, and that completes the piping for the water system. Time to test it. I've used what's left of a bottle of spring water that I was drinking to initially put some water into the tank. All I need to do now is move the pump handle back and forth to pump the water from the tank through the economizer and into the boiler via the check valve. The water level in the water tank has dropped considerably. Time to fill it up, this time using a full bottle of tap water. I'll speed up the video for this next bit. Everything seems fine, there are no leaks and the water level is going down quite fast with the video running at 400%. The water level is showing in the water gauge, so everything seems to be fine. For the steam test, I don't want the water level to be right at the top of the gauge glass. For the test, half to three quarters will be perfect. This pump has quite a large ram, so the water soon goes from the water tank into the boiler. Time to refill it once again and carry on pumping. In this clip, I'm fitting the top to the tank to prevent the ingress of any foreign bodies. There's a small job to do on the S50. It's something that I sort of overlooked. The gaskets are terrible on this S50, so I'm going to make some new ones, which is a very quick and simple job. When I put this back together after modifying the slide valve, I did notice that there was a bad air leak coming from the steam chest area. This is the original gasket material and it's very weak. I'm not going to show the making of the new gasket because I've done this many times in many videos. In the next episode I will complete the fitting of the piping to the engine and give it a steam test. That's it for now, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.